The Duke of Sussex today vowed to bring up his son Archie with the value of community and friendship which he said he had learned on his 10-day tour of Southern Africa, after he was reunited with his wife after six days apart. Prince Harry, 35, spoke as he began the final day of his visit with wife Meghan, 38, as they visited a centre in the Johannesburg township of Tembiza to learn about the critical levels of youth unemployment in South Africa. Harry gave a speech in the open air and, with Meghan beside him, talked about how his father the Prince of Wales brought him to Africa in the months following the death of his mother Diana, Princess of Wales, in 1997. Meghan spoke about the astronomical potential of those involved in the centre, adding that there is so much talent here and that when women can control their own purse strings, my goodness, you can do anything. It comes as the couple marked the end of their 10-day tour of Southern Africa and hours after Prince Harry launched an extraordinary attack on the British media accusing the press of bullying and relentless propaganda. In a lengthy personal statement on his and Meghan's official website, Harry referenced Princess Diana and said his deepest fear was his wife falling victim to the same powerful forces that his mother faced. Today at the Yes Hub, Harry said, Ever since I came to this country as a young boy, trying to cope with something I could never possibly describe, Africa has held me in an embrace that I will never forget and feel incredibly fortunate for that. Every time I come here I know that I'm not alone. I always feel wherever I am on this continent that the community around me provides a life that is enriching and is rooted in the simplest things, connection, connection with others and the natural environment. And as I raise my own son, I'm going to make sure that what I've learned here, the value of the natural world, the value of community and friendship, is something that I can pass on to him. In Meghan's speech, made without notes, she added, You really have been such an inspiration for us and being here today, from every level of what we've seen, there is such a holistic approach to how you have energized and mobilized each other to be part of a bigger change. There is so much ingenuity here, there's so much promise here, that given the right level of support and resources that you need, the potential is astronomical, and you can see that there. And I think for you women, I'm so proud of you and the business you're creating, and also being able to now control your own purse strings, because when you have that level of independence, my goodness you can do anything. So, thank you for giving us the opportunity to meet with all of you, to be able to feel inspired and for welcoming us so warmly, strongly, beautifully to your country, we loved it. Harry and Meghan learned about how the youth employment services, yes, Group is creating 1 million new work opportunities in the next three years, after it was launched by President Cyril Ramaphosa in April 2018. The couple, who were reunited last night after six days apart on solo parts of the tour, were welcomed at the hub today by Melanie Campbell from the British High Commission and Yes Chief Executive Tashnia Ishmael Saville. The Duchess smiled broadly when she was greeted, and the couple were then ushered inside the Yes Hub, a collection of shipping containers and buildings, where they were given a briefing about the initiative. Speaking to a group of young people and fledgling entrepreneurs, Harry said, Next year we launch our new foundation and it's moments like today and meeting all of you that inspire us. Whether supporting young entrepreneurs, empowering women and girls or challenging the issue of gender-based violence, whether it be planting trees, clearing landmines or protecting the most beautiful creatures and places on this planet, these experiences have affirmed our love of Africa and the issues that are so important to us. We will firmly stand up for what we believe, we are fortunate enough to have a position that gives us amazing opportunities and we will do everything that we can to play our part in building a better world. We will also seek to challenge injustice and to speak out for those who may feel unheard. So, no matter your background, your nationality, your age or gender, your sexuality, your physical ability, no matter your circumstance, or color of your skin, we believe in you. We intend to spend our entire lives making sure that you have the opportunity to succeed and change the world. Ms. Ishmael Saville told Harry and Meghan about the work and background of the group while Mish, a local master chief winner and entrepreneur with a community catering business, made them refreshments. The Duke and Duchess also had a walking tour of the hub's entrepreneurial and skills programs, 
beginning in the digital facility where YES helps people with skills and knowledge around financial literacy and computing. Local young people told Harry and Meghan, who gave a brief speech at the end of their visit, about their experiences on the program and the digital skills they have gained. M's Ishmael Saville said, I thought they were very relaxed, completely immersed in the conversations they were having. And very positive. He, Harry, has got a lovely sense of humor. Lots of little quips. In the aquaponics facility, a young entrepreneur told them how the facility has provided opportunities in his community, helping the surrounding area of local restaurants and shops with a supply of fresh local produce. They also visited Blossom Care Solutions to hear from some of the 14 young women being mentored before taking on the program, which produces up to 80,000 compostable and affordable sanitary towels per month. Megan was particularly taken with the business Blossom Care, and excitedly showed her husband the manufacturing process. She told the Blossom Care ladies, I love it. I can't wait to see what's going on inside. Yvonne Siboni 27, and Portia Tavane, 32, were both unemployed before joining Blossom Care Solutions in June and met the Duke and Duchess during today's visit. M. Sabagnoni, who has a BA Honors in Public Management, we are two of the 13 ladies the event today was interesting because we got the opportunity to meet the Prince and the Princess. Today was a great opportunity and an exciting moment for us. According to research, 26% of young ladies don't go to school because they don't have easy access to sanitary napkins. So they introduced this project so they can produce affordable and eco-friendly sanitary pads. Our pads are 100% biodegradable after 90 days. Portia Tavane, 32, qualified in general manufacture and design, said, Women in Tembiza will be able to have pads and go to school with pads. Most are afraid to go to school without pads. On the royal visit, she said, He's a prince, the son of Princess Diana and I remember her. It means a lot that they are supporting us. That shows they care about people, not just in their country but in Africa as a whole. His speech was powerful, empowering young people, young women, young business. It was powerful that they will also donate money here. It's good for the community, especially Tembiza. The community hub is supported by British Aid and the Foreign and Commonwealth Office. They saw students learn digital skills and saw a polytunnel where gardeners were growing organic lettuces to be sold locally. M's Ishmael Saville added, One of the things they were so impressed with was the potential of the young people they met. Looking at the unemployment issues. That empathy meant a lot to the people there. When they engage with people they really feel that they're in the conversation. They're interested in the technology. We've trained over 3,500 people here and now have a 22-person classroom to train digitally which will help amplify our coding and design programs. The couple have spent the past nine days visiting Southern Africa and raising issues they are passionate about including wildlife conservation and female empowerment. During their final day in Johannesburg the couple will also meet Grossa Michelle, widow of Nelson Mandela a national figure Harry met during a 2015 visit to South Africa. Later the Sussexes will attend the Creative Industries and Business Reception at the residence of Britain's High Commissioner to South Africa Nigel Casey. More than 300 guests will be gathered for the event celebrating the UK and South Africa's business investment relationship and looking ahead to the Africa Investment Summit being hosted in the UK in 2020. The tour will come to an end when the Duke and Duchess meet President Ramaphosa, and First Lady Dr. Chpomotsp in Pretoria for a private audience. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle meet Nelson Mandela's widow Grossa Michelle in Johannesburg as Duchess tells their African hosts, You have given us joy. Nelson Mandela's widow Grossa Michelle today said she could feel the vibe after meeting the Duke and Duchess of Sussex in South Africa and insisted she was sure they would work together in the future. Prince Harry, who last met Mrs. Michelle in London earlier this year, introduced the 73-year-old humanitarian to his wife Meghan in Johannesburg on the final day of the royal couple's 10-day tour to Southern Africa. Meghan spoke with her about staying in South Africa while her husband had been traveling, saying, I've been holding things down on this side. 
Harry added, I've done five or six countries in the past nine days. As their visit nears its end, Meghan later told a business reception, whether for Harry, Archie and me in South Africa, or for my husband as he was traveling Botswana, Angola, and Malawi, please know that you have all given us so much inspiration, so much hope, and above all, you have given us joy. When they arrived to meet Mrs. Michelle, Meghan said, it's so good to see you. Mrs. Michelle replied, it's wonderful meeting you. I'm sure we're going to be working together in the future. I can feel the vibe. It comes as the couple mark the end of their 10-day tour of Southern Africa and hours after Prince Harry launched an extraordinary attack on the British media accusing the press of bullying and relentless propaganda. In a lengthy personal statement on his and Meghan's official website, Harry referenced Princess Diana and said his deepest fear was his wife falling victim to the same powerful forces that his mother faced. Today, Ms. Michelle spoke to Harry, whom she met in London earlier this year and last in South Africa in 2015, saying, Harry, welcome, it's so good to see you again. Harry then told Mrs. Michelle, you look amazing. How do you manage it? Grossa laughed, no, 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 there's nothing like that. Age doesn't. Speaking to Harry, she was heard saying it was so nice to see you in Angola, adding, the Princess of Wales and all the steps she has taken. It was wonderful. Mozambique-born Mrs. Michelle, an advocate for women's and children's rights who was made an honorary British dame in 1997, was married to and the apartheid political leader Mr. Mandela from 1998 until his death in 2013. Harry has been visiting Southern Africa for two decades for holidays and conservation work, and has been to South Africa, Botswana, Angola and Malawi during this 10-day trip. Earlier, Harry and Meghan, who were on tour for the first time with their four-month-old son Archie, met young people and entrepreneurs in a township in Johannesburg and visited initiatives tackling unemployment. Later, the Sussexes attended a creative industries and business reception at the residence of Britain's High Commissioner to South Africa Nigel Casey. More than 300 guests gathered for the event celebrating the UK and South Africa's business investment relationship and looking ahead to the Africa Investment Summit being hosted in the UK in 2020. In a speech at the event, Harry joked, I think this is one of those garden parties that really kicks off once we have left. He added, although I have spent a great deal of time here over the years, this visit, in particular, has filled us with hope and optimism. This morning, we were among young social entrepreneurs in Tembiza, and it is testament to what investment, technology, and the right support can really do to transform lives and communities. These young people weren't in it just for themselves, each and every one of them was using the opportunity they had been given, and the skills they had learned, to give back and support more people within in their own community. It is also a perfect example of what we want the UK-Africa partnership to be about, youth, culture, innovation, high-tech business, investment, in fast-changing economies. All of you here today have a part in supporting a young and dynamic African economy, and I hope that you will use your links to the UK to help you do that. Speaking about the end of their visit, Meghan added, Over the past 10 days our family has had emotional moments, we've poignant moments, we've had spiritual moments, we've met inspirational leaders in every walk of life and we've been treated to incredible food, music, and dancing, but above all, we have been able to meet the people that are the rocks behind the sort of work that really means a so much to us. It has been affirming to learn that we're not alone in the things that we believe in, and the principles we hold so dear. The tour later came to an end as the Duke and Duchess met South Africa's President Cyril Ramaphosa, and First Lady Dr. Chpomotspin Pretoria for a private audience. The Duke and Duchess were given his and hers watches made just for royalty as they met the leading creatives and business people from South Africa. Watch designer Lung in July presented the gifts to Meghan as she toured a reception with husband Harry at the High Commissioner's residence showcasing leading talent based in the Johannesburg area. The timepieces featured beaded straps in the colors purple, white, red, and blue for Nkosana or Prince, and pink, green and yellow for Nkosazana. Princess. 
Mr. Ntulai said, she said to me it's not just it's a watch that has meaning, a watch that has a story, that's so fulfilling. It has a little love note in it, which tells the story behind the colors which all have meaning. Megan met a familiar face to Adokugat Latin 26, a young woman she had a few years ago in Ireland. The 26-year-old said, I told Megan that in 2014 we bonded even before she was even a duchess. I had gone to the One Young Worlds conference in Dublin and she remembered meeting me. I was in the audience and they asked for an opinion on social impact on the African continent and I stood up and gave an answer. Afterwards she said on the stage I have to come and hug you. She came down and hugged me and I took a selfie and she remembered today. And she gave me another hug. The businesswoman who is a founder of the Reef Aku Foundation which makes solar-powered backpacks for kids added, it made me feel memorable and that the work I'm going is memorable and that she cares about people who do meaningful work. Nell is Wafenti, 33, who co-founded the youth-led innovation firm Spring Age said after meeting the Royal, my organization brings together young people to tackle our problems on this continent. Megan loved it. She thinks the idea of the Millennial Board was great and important to go into corporates. Young people are our biggest commodity and sometimes they may not have stuff but they have their brains and we can bring them together.